students today we are going to start with a new unit that is first unit solid state last year it was been excluded from the cbsc chemistry syllabus but now this year it is been again included so today our uh, unit is, is solid state so before we begin with the solid state let us recall the previous knowledge that what is a solid Now student, what is a solid? It is a substance which has definite shape and definite volume. This is your previous knowledge that any substance which has got a definite shape and a definite volume will be known as solid. Now here we can take an example of any metal or a salt here, sodium chloride, a non-metal like phosphorus, sulfur. They all come under the solid. Even plastics rubber, we are all solid. Now the solid, if you go through the kinetic theory of molecules, so we will consider now that solid, the constituent particles are closely packed okay? and the force which get these particles closer to one another intermolecular forces of attraction. So if we consider the solid the intermolecular force of attraction is very high. Now this intermolecular force of attraction is very high because the intermolecular distance or we can say space between the particles, so the constituent particles is negligible or is very very small. Right, so we can say that the force of attraction between the atoms or the molecules of a solid is very high as the distance between them is very very less. Now, we have got one more term which is known as thermal energy. Right, now what is the thermal energy? It is the energy possessed by the atoms or molecules of a, of a substance due to the heat. So it is the energy possessed by the substance, it can be solid, liquid or a gas, due to heat whenever it is been heated and is been heated or the it gains the heat from the surrounding and what does it cause it causes the thermal motion right it causes the atoms molecules of a substance to move from its position now in case of solid, if we see the intermolecular forces of attraction is greater than the thermal motion. 
right? The force of attraction which holds the particle or atom or molecule in its place is higher than the therm thermal motion. As a result, what will happen? The solid particles will remain in their place or we can say that solid is rigid, right? It is not going to flow until and unless it has been heated which breaks down its intermolecular force of attraction. In case of liquid or a gas, the intermolecular forces, they are less than the thermal motion, thermal energy. As a result, what will happen? The molecules will just overcome the intermolecular force of attraction and they will start to flow right now the characteristics of solid after going through a definition and the arrangement we will come to the characteristics of solid right so what is the characteristic of solid the first one is have definite shape, mass and volume. Second one is that they are rigid. Third is shows diffusion less extent if we compare it with the uh, liquid or gases uh, they are almost incompressible and where we have got the examples of the solid which are compressible definitely there will be air gaps between the particles or between the molecules which get compressed when the force is being applied. So they have a definite shape, mass and volume, rigid, shows diffusion to less extent and almost incompressible and have high density. If we compare it with the so liquid or gases, they will have high density. You can mention few other characteristics also in your class notebook along with this right now we are going to just study about the classification of solid that how the solids are being classified Okay, now I think definition is clear. Now next come the classification of solid. Classification. So depending upon the arrangement. of the constituent particles the solid is been classified into two types one is crystalline solid another one is amorphous Solid. So we have got two types. One is crystalline solid and is amorphous solid. Now let us first take the example that what uh, example of crystalline solid. So we can take any metal here, iron, copper, or NaCl, KNO3, sulfur, phosphorus. They all belong to the crystalline solids. And they are known as the true solid. The crystalline solid are known as true solid. 
amorphous solid we have got the example glass plastics rubber quartz glass and these are known as pseudo solid or super cooled liquids so what uh, so solids have been divided into two types crystalline solid and amorphous solid we have taken the few examples from our daily life iron copper and acl potassium nitrate sulfur phosphorus these are the example of crystalline solid and they are known as a true solid amorphous solids we have got glass plastics rubber quartz glass and they are known as pseudo solid or super cooled liquid 